Welcome to Awareness to Action, where you'll discover how possibilities become reality with me, Joan Marlowe. Join me and my amazing guests for powerful stories about those world-shifting aha moments. You know, the ones that catapult you into action and transform the way you walk through the world. Yes, you can live your life with purpose and passion. Maybe you aren't there yet, and that's okay. This show will take you behind the scenes and walk you through how other people just like you were called to transform their lives and the journey they embarked on to get there. The first step to taking life-changing action, or any action at all, is awareness. Maybe that's why you're here. Join the movement to create and live your purpose and passion while embracing your authenticity. Awareness to action starts now. morning and welcome to Awareness to Action. I'm Joan Marlowe. And, you know, just when you think you have something down correct, I go, oh, let's mess with it a little bit and let's make a change. So instead of having one guest today, I have four. <sighs> yes, new management, new organization skills at hand. And, um, but however, I'm okay with these four guests because these four guests constantly have my back. And I know they're here for me. So this show, uh oh, here I go. <laughs> Mostly, really, I start crying. Get, get the wine. I know, trying to get the wine. So this show is very, very different from my other shows. This show is called Doing Life Together. And this show came to me when I first started thinking about doing this show, Awareness to Action. And I had to think about, again, I'm, I'm, I'm a Virgo, so I'm somewhat of a planner and organizer. You wouldn't know that looking at some of my house, but okay, fine. And I needed to find a way to organize my thoughts and how I was going to assemble these amazing people that I knew I had in my life. And so I went to the calendar and I said, okay, what kind of commemorative months do we have? And lo and behold, the month of August, so these guys were the first ones I invited. The month of August has something in it that is called um, National Friendship Day. It's August 1st, in case you didn't know. So now you can mark your calendar. And so this was the logical place to be, was right here. And again, because you also know that I love doing operational definitions, a little bit about this National Friendship Day, guess where it was created? One, two, three, Hallmark. Hallmark cards <laughs> needed a commemorative event in August, and here we are. So, but it's all good. And this has been around since like the 30s. So mm -hmm. then the government stepped in and they made it a national holiday and whatever else. So there's rhyme and reason to everything, and sometimes we have to dig through it. So let me tell you a little bit about this show, first of all. It, as I said, it's called Doing Life Together. And what I'm going to ask you to do, you the listeners, is just think about the people you have in your life and think about those that are already your friends and think about the extraneous people that you have in other portions of your life. Think about the people that you might now be seeing again in your exercise classes. Think about the people that you just happen to bump into often. I mean, kismet will happen, happen, serendipity happens. You constantly meet them at the grocery store. Or think about, again, these just random spaces and you go, wow, I keep meeting up with you. What is that about? Well, that's sort of like what happened to us. Where we started meeting was at um, a seat where we're all involved in the senior industry. And that simply means we each had services or products that we were promoting to help seniors live their best lives. I kept saying, why was I there? Because I am the anomaly, because my service is so difficult to understand, you know, healing and coaching, what the devil is that about? But I stuck it out and I am glad I did because my rewards are going to be part of this show. These four women, um, we are distinctly different and you'll learn a little bit about that. And we also, we look at the fact that if you look at some of your friendships, and we've got our bestie world, you know, those world, those do or die people or whatever else, but usually it comes in a series of one, you have one bestie, and 
I have a much better deal. My deal is that I have four besties and they are my coffee buddies and they will walk through fire and, and brimstone and everything else for me. So here we were going to our little networking meetings and Elaine happened to be the facilitator at one of the meetings that we love to go to. And it was a unique meeting as well because we got to tell stories about us and we got to talk about our soul. And I think that was a piece that was different for us in that we were talking about people other than just the product that they served or they sold we learned who they were at their deepest soul and i mean some of them were very very heavy duty conversations and that was what was so unique about that so i think it's very funny that we were here together but we each had our own business we were growing a business at that point in time so we then sort of helped each other with resources we would share if there was going to be some kind of a social media class that we would go to and then grind and grumble and show frustration about because then we had somebody that we could be frustrated with. We went to workshops together. We did all kinds of things, but yet there was still, there was something there that we kept coming back. So when you think about now this world of being immediate gratification, this was more or less a slow grow because it was all about learning people from the inside out. And so one day, and I think it was Nancy that said, we need to move this out. Let's now go for a cup of coffee. And off we went for a cup of coffee. Well, from there, it grew, grew and it grew and it grew. And this was 10 plus years ago that this all happened. And this is how the Coffee Buddies was established. So this relationship is unique. In, and this is in the description of the show. The words that they put together when we had a Zoom meeting a couple of months ago to plan this show included things like rapport, respect, magnetism, support, a sisterhood, and a knowingness that when there's a need, you have a team. That is so true. The unfortunate, fortunate story for me is I get hurt a lot. <laughs> I get injured a lot. And these girls are always there to back me up and help me out and get me back on my feet. And so I'm forever and forever and forever in their debt. So let's go ahead and let me introduce these amazing women. So again, what else is really funny is to do this show for people, as I said, I've never had four guests. We, we managed with one guest and now we had the four. And so my wonderful producer, Malia, wrote me a note yesterday and said, well, you know, are we doing four different segments on the show? Or are we doing it all together like a round table? Well, in our true sense, I went back to my team and said, what do you want to do? And they practically punched me out to say, of course we're going to do this. What do you mean we're going to do this separately? We play off of each other and this is how we do things. So once again, that whole coffee buddy spirit of unity and togetherness or whatever the purpose is in the moment came up. So let me tell you about these amazing women. And you've got their full bios are included in the show notes um, for the show on my website and on Transformation Talk Radio's website. But let me give you a little, you know, helicopter viewpoint of who they are. We start out with Cindy, Cindy Prasowski. And Cindy right now is happily living life as a wife, mother, and grandma to eight wonderful grandkids because she is now retired. And that's great. And she is our vintage shopping, crafting, yard art, and anything rusty girl. So that's where, that's where we go to for, for some of it. And, and, and again, I don't, I'm not a crafty person, so I'm always in awe. We go to her house, there's always this show of what is going on here. So that is who she is. But how we met her was, again, her aha at that moment was um, her husband had lost his job of 32 years and they were going, now what are we going to do? They started a business called No Slip Zone and Cindy became the marketer. So here she was now finding herself in this networking world. And, and that's who we knew her as. And, and again, they had a brand. And again, No Slip Zone. You look at the sign that says no slipping and it's usually yellow and black. Cindy always wore yellow and black. It was wonderful. So that was Cindy's branding. And that's who we knew who she was. And then we go on and we are looking at Elaine Poker Yount. And they're in the same little square together. And Elaine... Her role is she's an advocate for aging as successfully and gracefully as possible. And Elaine's all about providing community, and educa community with education, resources, and outreach opportunities. 
She currently is the director of care management for Visiting Angels East Valley here in Arizona, and she's a certified dementia trainer, a community educator, coach for families living with dementia, and a contributing author to a monthly column in our local Arizona Republic. So anyone who's local, you can probably also find it online. Her, the resources that she shares in those articles are huge as far as how mm -hmm. you successfully age. And again, Elaine and I do a lot of collaboration because Elaine started conferences years ago in this age. And we now have an annual dementia conference that we partner with and that I'm a part of and I'm blessed to be a part of that. And so that's who Elaine is. Elaine's all about helping us into our second 50 years. <laughs> So without saying more about that, we also have someone else in the room who's helping us get through our second 50 year or, or, or how many other 50 years we have. And that would be <laughs> Jeanette Knudsen. Now, Jeanette Knudsen, her background is she was a banker in the banking industry for 30 years. And then all of a sudden one day went, I don't think this is working for me anymore. And she went back to something from her college days of when she had taken a class in interior design. She went back and got more education, another degree in whatever else in interior design. And she um, she has her, she's in the design for aging and universal design. So she's all about helping people stay in their homes for as long as they want to stay in their homes. One of the things that's really cool about Jeanette, Jeanette has a copyrighted phrase that's called toe tag homes. <laughs> <laughs> so think about that for a moment and think, and I live in a toe tag home, this home, they will take me out my front door or out the garage or whatever else. And I'll have a toe tag on my toe. And that's when I will say goodbye to my home. That's my game plan. So Jeanette is all about helping people design their home so they can live, they can live in it for as long as they want to. Now, along that line, we have her, her square buddy here, who's Nancy Tossell. Nancy, again, Nancy's background is very different. Her, her career career was in the medical technology world and in sales and whatever else, a medical technician. And then she got married later in life and she and her husband were, they decided to travel the world. They've been to every continent except Antarctica. Think about that for a moment. So yes, travel is certainly in her blood and, and antsy, yeah, that's still there. So she loves to see things. And again, we're, so we're talking about this wealth of just who these people are and what they do. Nancy went through a whole series of different things, figuring out who she wanted to be when she grew up in her new second 50 years, if I must call it that. And when we met up with her, she was in the finance world and then she got making healthy chocolate and whatever. But now she's really landed in the world of copywriting. And she is stellar in that world. And she and Jeanette collaborated together to write a book that would support people in their journeys, both on the financial part, as well as the design part of making their home be able to become that toe tag home. So without further ado, here are, here are my coffee buddies. We have Jeanette and Nancy and Cindy and Elaine. So um, again, for, for me to tell a little bit about what's going on, let me, let me give you, and again, another part of my, my show is all about operational definitions. And so an operational definition is, you know, everybody on the same page as far as what we're talking about doing here. So we're looking at, we, we looked at what the title of, you know, Friendship, National Friendship Day is. We also look at what this title of Coffee Buddies is. And it's all about, as I shared, it's all about this connection that we have, but I want you to think about the connections that you have with your current friends. And again, think outside the box as far as how you can expand and create some other enriching kinds of um, kinds of friendships. So the quote that I like to use also when I talk about this is people come into your life for a reason, a season, or a lifetime as how we view our friendships. When we figure out which one it is, you will know what to do for each person. And that's, that was so succinct and so clear for what's going on with this group right now. So without further ado, I think we've got to go to a break. So let's do a break now and then we're going to come back and you're going to hear each one of these women share where their interest was, why they wanted to go and have that cup of coffee and why they're still hanging out now, 10 years later. So thanks so much. See you in a minute.
Well, good morning again, and welcome back to Awareness to Action. I'm Joan Marlowe, and today's session or today's episode is all about, I think, inspiration and the hope that we are putting together um, to provide inspiration for you to look at friendship differently and to not always find a clone of yourself because our, we, we five women are certainly not clones by any stretch of the imagination. You go to each other's houses, oh, there are no clones there. So, you know, what, and our lives are just very, very different. And that's what we're trying to say. And, and, and so, and we were laughing during the break because Cindy has stopped breathing. So <laughs> Elaine Howe has a note that's saying breathe on the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> on the bottom of the note. So again, we constantly have each other's backs. And that's what this is all about. And laughing is so, so healthy. So yeah. let's keep moving forward here. So normally I do an aha, I, I ask a question and it's about an aha moment that catapulted you, that thing that clicked and you went, okay, I'm on it. I'm out of here. Like with Jeanette's story about saying, ah, banking's not cutting it anymore. I'm out of here. I'm going to go back and get more education, start a whole new career. Nancy's had lots of ahas in her careers and whatever, and she tries them and, and decides no, but she's now found her passion in what she's doing. But what we're talking about here is, again, something very, very different. And again, I can't use the word catapult as I talk about this description for the aha going from awareness to action. We are talking more of a development a slow development over time that brought us lots and lots of instances where we go, hmm, I want to learn more. So my aha, my question today is a little bit different. So my question is, what was your aha moment that let you know that this connection and the development of these friendships was going to be different and special? And let's start off with Nancy. Well, it, you know, as far as uh, the aha, I it wasn't like a moment, like you said, it, it's something that evolved. And, you know, we had the commonality, as you mentioned, that we were in senior businesses, we were entrepreneurs. And I think for me, when we, we all were attending uh, RAIN, which was the um, group that Elaine was hosting. And for me, it was, it was over a couple of months because it was a monthly meeting. And I started realizing that um, I really, there were certain people in the group that were standing out to me that were easy, easier to talk to because, you know, when you have a, a networking meeting, you have a little bit of time to do some one-on-one. -on -one. And with the four of you, it was always so easy. So I said, okay, well, we're, we have some common uh, traits with what we're doing. We seem to, to get along very easily and chat very easily. So the, it was kind of like the, the equation was simple. What would it be like to just get together to have a cup of coffee? You know, it, it just seemed like it, it's such a logical progression because it, it would be so easy. So yeah, getting together and actually getting together has been our biggest hurdle uh, over the years. Mm -hmm. But it was the kind of thing where I, I was looking, I'm like you, for, Joan, you and I are the ones that don't have kids. We don't have immediate family in the area. So part of it was a selfish on my part to, to try to develop more friends and and go beyond acquaintances because we have lots of acquaintances we have and we have different levels of acquaintances but it's the friends and not the 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 best friend bestie kind of thing but the friend that, you, that says if you need me give me a call and you know you do not have to hesitate to pick up the phone and say i need you or you happen to be talking and say hey we haven't seen each other for a while. let's get together for lunch um it's just so easy and so at the time i could have never imagine it would we'd be doing a show about this I was, just looking, I was just looking to have some conversation over coffee again 10, 10 years in the making yes yes there's been coffee and a lot of wine yes uh, that's that's one of our commonalities too we like yes. wine and the other thing that we always have because we meet for potlucks and again as nancy said our most difficult situation is getting together because everybody has full lives, very, very full lives with tons of outside interests. And like Nancy said, the other gals have family. We don't have local, and Nancy and I don't have local family or whatever else. So, you know, we have, but, but again, we've got so many outside interests. So getting together has been difficult. And, but we so make it a priority when someone sends the call out and says, we need to get together. We haven't gotten together often. We haven't, we haven't seen each other in a while. Boom. We get those calendars out. We figure it out. We usually do a potluck at somebody's house. We rotate homes. 
And what else is fun, we actually have our little assignments. Who's doing appetizers? Who's doing the main dish? Who's bringing a salad? Because we all <laughs> love to cook. We all love to try new recipes. And we, it, so it's an adventure whenever we get together and then we share recipes and whatever. So it's just always an adventure. And the other commonality at each of our meetings is we have this a green onion cheese ball <laughs> <laughs> that is standard at our meeting, standard. Mm -hmm. Cindy's in charge of finding it. And our latest little crisis is during COVID or something's happened in COVID where the supplier of this cheese ball is not producing. <laughs> so we've, we've got to find something else that becomes a, you know, a staple in our, in our meetings. So, so yeah, so that's Nancy's take on it. So since we're in that square, Jeanette, we're going to jump to you. Oh. What was your, uh, yeah, I know I'm changing the script. Sorry. <laughs> Roll with it. All righty. Well, for me, um, an aha moment, it was a very slow progression for me. I have um, trust issues, so I'm very, very careful about who I open up to and, and what I show and, and share. So number one, I was totally thrilled that, you know, Nancy goes, hey, you want to come? And I'm going, really? <laughs> so, <clears throat> okay. So yeah, so as we just kind of uh, got together, and, and I was very, very slow at opening up, but there came a point where it was like, this is a safe group. I can share my deepest thoughts and feelings and know that I'm safe. And, um, and over and over, like you had said, Joan, we're all here for each other. Crisis come up, you guys are there. So um, I absolutely am thrilled that we get together and um, yeah, I'm, that's it. It was just a slow roll. And now I wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything for the world. It's you are my people. <laughs> <laughs> you are my people. I found my tribe. Here's there the we go. Here's there the we tribe. go. Yeah. So again, you know, what Jeanette said is, is also another contributing factor to this in looking at this trust factor. And for me, I mean, when we get around whomever's dining room or kitchen table or patio we're sitting on, there is this moment where we don't talk over each other. We're laughing over each other now, but we don't talk over each other. Each one shares what's going on. So we, we're caught up with what's happening because we don't text each other constantly. We don't get on the phone all the time to each other. That's not who we are. And so, and we, 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 do clarifying questions of each other and again we always ask permission whether or not you know are you okay in talking about this so that respect is so important to us as well as building that rapport and at times people aren't they just want to vent and so we hold space for our other coffee buddy in here because that's what she needs at this point in time and then you'll be darn sure that when that meeting is over we're now checking in each one individually on what's happening with that gal at that point in time but that again is something that I think has created who we are and is more or less our glue and like Jeanette said it's that whole trust and that safe feeling because no one wants to go into a group and have a bully in the group or having people that are one-upping each other or because there's too much of that out there. We don't want to be the out there group. We found each other and this is our tribe and, and here we are. Like it or lump it, here we are. And trust us. We're, we're trust stuck us, with each other. Trust, right us, we, trust us, we go through that too. And I'll talk about that later on. We know where each other lives. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. That's right. So we're going to go to a break. When we come back, we're going to finish up talking about ahas and then dig a little deeper. Thank you so much.
Well, as you might have imagined, during the break, we were jibber jabbering. So we've talked about the weather. We've talked about the fact that the fear is now gone. They're thinking that this is fun. And they aren't, they aren't using little voodoo doll and sticking pins in it anymore, saying, Joan, 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 why'd you make us do this? So they've now jumped in and they're understanding why I so enjoy this as well and why I'm just so excited about them being the people that they are in my life and how I feel that we can influence and inspire others to look outside their norm to find people and just look at those and just observe for a while, check them out, and then make that determination of saying, hey, let's go do something outside of this norm to continue the conversation. So let's continue to go around our room here and Cindy, share your aha. Hi, everybody. Uh, I am still breathing. I just want to let you know that. And uh, I am. Yay. I am we, don't want any to we don't want any toe tag stuff going on. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, when I first uh, started going to these networking meetings, my main focus was trying to get the word out about our business and find customers. And then what I found was awesome ladies that I was having fun connecting with and making friends. And it was awesome for me. So, you know, when Nancy mentioned, let's go, into, go to coffee and ask me, I felt honored. So I guess that was kind of my aha moment, even though I, you know, it, it was a gradual process. My aha moment was when I got invited. And, and it's continued on. And um, so it's, it's not all about work in our businesses. It's about our friendships and, and supporting each other. So that's it. And I'm still breathing. Good. I'm glad. <laughs> keep, keep breathing. Keep breathing. Thank breathing you. is good. In and out, in and out, in and out. Thank yeah. You. So that must be why I was invited to be in the group, because I can help you guide you through breathing. Make sure you're breathing. breathe, breathe, breathe. Yeah, just, that was just breathe. Just breathe. That's the way to go through. Yeah. That truly is the way to go through life. So again, it's this whole thing about being honored. And as I said earlier, some of us might have had experiences in the past of trying to fit in to different groups. There is no fitting in with this group. Mm -hmm. You are who you are. We love and accept whoever you are. Sometimes you might, we might go a little ah, with each other because we're human. N Nancy was cranked yesterday, but that's neither here nor there. We're, we're all good. And now she's under, see, and this was a seeking first to understand and then be understood. As I was rolling out what this, she's going, John, this is too much detail, too much detail. I'm going, just wait, just wait. So again, but we're okay because we, it's just this pure acceptance of who we are. And we also are here to help. If someone's having a bad day, we might call someone else and go, I just need to vent or I need a decision to make and help me make this decision. I'm calling upon you to help me just because of whatever. I spun the wheel and you're the one. So it's, it's, and again, we always find the time for each other and that's important. So let's listen to Elaine. Elaine, what was your aha? My aha, uh -huh. and I think that I kind of had an aha. Uh -huh. It came before Nancy invited us for coffee, but as we were all going through these networking meetings or just different things, classes that we were going to, we kept finding ourselves at similar class, you know, at the same class. Mm -hmm. And one or two or all of us would be learning how to use Facebook or going to a marketing team class and, and how to be savvy on social media and become a little more hip than we were, um, that kind of thing. And, <laughs> and, and notice, that, how, notice how far we've come getting hip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Cindy's the, Cindy's the queen, I would say, of, of social media and, and communication and computers and all that stuff. She's the queen. Even when she's breathing. Yeah. Even when yeah. she's breathing. Um, but... What, what struck me, and my meeting was a little bit unique because we, um, we would kind of focus on some kind of interpersonal thing just to kind of get to know the people because the one thing nobody really needs to be, or I guess none of us needed to be told in business or it was kind of the, the comment or the, I don't know, theory of the 
the day was you do business with the people you know, like, and trust. So we really were focusing um, on getting to know people on more of a human level. And the thing that just struck me with all of us is that we, yes, we were here to progress our business, but as humans, we were really here to serve the customer in a really different way. And, um, and that to me just brought out this really intense level of authenticity that you, not that we don't work in, with a world of really wonderful people, because I will tell you in this world of Phoenix, the people who serve the elder population are phenomenal human beings. And they are people that care from their heart. And, and their soul and they do what's best for the people. So we, we work in an incredible environment. However, there was just something completely unique. And I think it was Nancy who said it, there was a click that just sort of happened. So we went to coffee, no big deal. And then it kind of grew and we were getting together, I think every other month really consistently. And for the most part, we do do that. Sometimes we lag a little bit with, with vacations. Um, but as this was starting, my head said, Jesus, I don't have any time to do one more thing. And, and, I, and I, I knew it was gonna be a thing because I felt it and I wanted it to be the thing, but I, I get excited about everything. I have this innate sense of curiosity. That's something Joan and I probably really share um, intensely. And everything sounds fun and everything sounds exciting and intriguing and you wanna be involved. So I have to kind of watch my boundaries sometimes. But this, it just the floodgates was like, now nope, we're doing this and we're getting in. And then you're kind of sucked in and it's, it's comfortable and happy and, and when we talk about even just the personalities, the way we approach things, because a lot of times we're drawn to people who do things that we don't do, or you know they're interesting because it's it's different and it's new, and it, we're you know we get to learn about things we didn't learn about, and we there's definitely some of that going on I think because of our differences. So, um, but that authenticity piece just rang so intensely with me um, and, and the level of comfort uh, was just kind of a natural flow. Mm -hmm. well, thank you. And again, when we look at this whole process of this show, again, that awareness to action and those five A's that are involved in this awareness to action, you've got the awareness and our, our desire is to get to take some kind of action. We're gonna talk about that in a minute, but we look at those two middle sections as far as that, that acceptance and that now acknowledgement that this, and Elaine just went through, all, went through all five steps for us, looking at that acknowledgement that this is something different. This is something unique. This is something to keep. And again, uh, Elaine and I are very, very social, social beings. And, you know, and, and again, finding one more thing and yeah, our calendars are full, but this takes a priority above everything else. And then that, that fifth A is authenticity. And what we are finding in this world in which we live in is that so many people aren't authentic. And again, when you're in a group and all of a sudden somebody's coming at you sideways, you thought you knew them mm -hmm. and all of a sudden something happens and you go, whoa, this isn't the person that I thought they were. I cannot even imagine that happening here because the other piece is we also approach each other and say, hey, were you a little off yesterday? What's going on? You know, why, why are you <laughs> at me? Why were you snapping? <laughs> no, nothing about you yesterday, Nancy. Nothing about that. <laughs> <laughs> See, she points the finger at me. Yeah, yeah pointing a finger at you. I don't, I don't do finger pointing though. So, but, but, it's, but it's okay because we have such a deep caring for each other. And we, you know, what I've said so many times throughout this whole pandemic thing is that we each go through a time of feeling down in the dumps and, oh my God, I'm scared or, you know, it's useless. I mean, you know, I'm going to jump ship or whatever else. And then you climb back up on the, on the game board and whatever, and out you go. And then it's just someone else's turn, but that's human nature. 
that you just can't always be up, 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 up all the time. And that you do have, and again, that innate ability that I think we have amongst ourselves or amongst each other that actually says, I'm going to reach out to do something. And, and again, we do do things that are like that too. We, um, you know, we gather to go to plays together. Christmas time, we might do a play. Christmas time, we expand our group to even more, more women that, again, and part of us decided, we talk, we talk about this as a group. Five is, an ama- five is an odd number because sometimes people go, you know, three and five and seven, what are you gonna do with that odd man out? That is never an issue with us. But we also think, you know, would it rock the boat if we bring more people in and whatever? And so these are things that we talk about, talked about amongst ourselves. So we do bigger things. We go and, and Cindy will create us a field trip that we go somewhere and look at rusty stuff because she's happy with rusty stuff. So and then she'll tell us what to do with it. I, I buy the rusty stuff and go, and what do I do with it? So and then it sits and gets rustier. So. <laughs> Oh, you paint it and, you know, you, you buy rusty stuff and you paint it and you create your little magical backyard. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But so we, so we each take something of value or something that's not us and we sort of live vicariously. And how many times do I write to you guys and say, I'm living vicariously through you now. And thank you so much for doing that because that's not my thing. And it's not something that we do together all the time. When you look at sports activities or hobbies or whatever, I mean, Jeanette is an archer. So, okay, what does that even mean? And and (laughs) Nancy's into hiking and golf. And so when we look at these things, but we don't have to do those things together. If we choose to, that's really great to do, but we don't have to do those kinds of things together. So, um, it, it, certain, it certainly is a sisterhood that's been involved. And like sisters, we have our ups and downs and whatever else and our grumbling and our grinding. And But yet, when somebody needs assistance, they are strongly, strongly there. Um, we cover all bases without fear of any kind of judgment. We don't talk about not meeting any expectations. If an expectation hasn't been met, maybe we say, okay, I was a little disappointed about such and such. So we also have difficult conversations, but we know that we're going to be safe with that. And someone's not going to go out and huff. And that's, that I think is also the difference in this group versus other friendship groups that you might have in that there isn't any of that stuff that's going on. Um, So And what else, and and another reason why I think the timeliness of this show is so wonderful is because this past year has been difficult on many people between the political wranglings that were going on and between the health and the COVID and whatever else, people were finding out that people weren't truly showing their colors or they were showing colors that they didn't like. And they were being verbose about those colors and trying to push those colors upon you. And so I've got lots of people in my life that are looking for new communities of women, of girlfriends. And I don't have a lot of the male knowledge, so I don't know about that, but I managed to do some research on that. But I think women overall are looking for this commonality. How can I get that spirit, that nurturing that we provide naturally to each other because we're females and women. So that's another piece, I think, again, when I'm asking you to take a look at your friendships now and looking at, you know, they might be all well and good and they have, again, that reason season or whatever else, but look at expanding those horizons to feed your better self because this is all about serving our greatest and highest good. This, meeting my coffee buddies, When we leave those meetings, what do we normally say? My soul is fed for another Mm -hmm. X number of weeks until we get together Mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. Our tummies are full. We've had our wine, but our soul. (laughs) And days later, we'll be saying, oh, my God, thank you for that time. Because we do honor the fact that we came together for that particular reason. And it's not easy for us all to get together at any point in time. So time for another break. When we come back. Again, this show is all about awareness to action. So we're going to talk a little bit about some other ideas that maybe each of the gals have as far as things you might do to maybe create something of your own along this line. So let's go to break and we'll be right back.
paper offline here, you know, getting our lines in order and who's going to say what and where'd, where'd question number two go, Joan? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm flying by the seat of my pants because I know you guys are creative and you'll just roll because that's just what we do. So, um, you know, the, the, the questions here, the question now is looking at, um, as I shared a little bit ago, I've got so many people in my world that are looking at trying to create something like we have, and they're looking at expanding their horizons to create more valuable friendships. And so we're looking at, you know, providing you some kind of ideas from each of us about what you might be able to do and action that you can take forward to maybe seek out some new friendships and, and to move forward in that, as well as looking at, you know, maybe the core piece is what is the difference with this one versus other stuff? So Cindy, what do you think? Okay, here I am. Um, for me, it was about sharing who I really am. And that is kind of that vintage shopper, um, rusty yard art, um, sharing it with other people and, and having them not judge me because my house isn't decorated very elegant and oh. in real rich stuff. It's more stuff I find at Goodwills. And uh, I mean, I do vendor shows, Highland Yard at, at Merchant Square. Um, and sharing it with all these ladies has been wonderful. So that's that's kind of where I'm coming from. I'm going to just pipe in here. <laughs> I, was, I figured Cindy's you were, house, your body language. I know. When you go to Cindy's house, it's so beautiful and it's so magical and it's so put together. Um, and it's so put together that you feel like you're transported to another place. And your whole body goes like, ah, the minute you walk in the door. So, and it's a little bit of an adventure because she lives a little bit farther away. And so we're going on a road trip and then we just get to be happy once we're there. It's so nice. And so it, it's exquisitely elegant. It's just not like crystal and whatever. It's actual, it's just the whole thing is immaculate and every little detail in every little corner is so amazing. And I don't have that and I hate to dust. So I get so happy oh, when I go no. there. <laughs> I do a lot of repurposing on stuff, so. Yeah. But okay, so just that perspective is everything, right? We just have this total perspective thing, so yeah. <laughs> But again, that's it. You know, go back and listen to this show later on and pick up those salient points. And watching the video would even be better to see Elaine's face because <laughs> Elaine had no idea that was coming out of Cindy's mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and again, it is all about perspective. And it's the stories that we have inside of our heads as far as what other people think of us, that whole judgy piece or whatever. And so that this is this is the purity of what this group is. So so Elaine, do you want to share a little bit more? What, what's your take? Um, what's your what are your what are your um, action items? Action items. Well, I, I think in a, in a different sense, um, sometimes getting friendships when you're older is harder. You know, I am blessed that I made exquisite friendships when my kids were little. And now I have all these families that we go on vacation together and we play cards on Sundays and we have this network and the kids and the adults all blend as one group. Mm -hmm. So when I talked about thinking, oh my gosh, adding one more thing um, and you're looking, how do we do this? Or, you know, if we want to just try, because I know a lot of people that have gone online, just what you said, looking for friends. I think the basic formula there is you just have to trust and you have to be willing to just take a little bit of a risk to go out there and just try it. Because if nothing else, you maybe had fun for the day or you did something different or you got out of your box um, because it's easy to, you know, kind of get yourself in your comfortable little spot and you don't want to move because it's safe and you know what it is. And, and, and getting out of that box can just open so many doors and so many opportunities. And I think even for all of us, we've watched each other change lanes or change boxes and say, oh my gosh, this cool thing happened or, or whatever. And, and I would have never been um, introduced to that world without Cindy 
but now I, you know, I'm making a room um, based on that for my grandkids. And and my husband's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm having fun. And, <laughs> and you know, because creative is fun and doing new things is fun. So I, I think the risk taking is a piece you have to just say, I'm going to do it. Yep. Dive in. It's huge. it's huge. But again, the definition of risk here is what do I have to lose? Yeah, it's exactly. what I have to gain. And again, like Elaine yeah. said, if you can come away with fun, and the thing is, when you change boxes, if you are modeling your new box after one of these other four ladies, you can say, help. When we're choosing colors, we go to Jeanette. When I find rusty things, I go to Cindy. You know, <laughs> when I'm looking for a recipe, I go to either Nancy or, or Elaine. I, here we go. So, so yeah, and again, it's all about having fun. So Nancy, what do you have to share? Um, I think if, if someone asked me, what is the, the, the one most important ingredient as to why this has worked? It's the willingness of everyone else to listen. Uh, the group is small enough that we have one conversation. And so whenever one person is talking and it just works out that we each sort of take a turn with it. But when the one person is talking, everybody else stops and just listens. And I think, in, you, you know, maybe you can confirm this. That's what build, helped build up the trust mm -hmm. of knowing that you had the attention. So I think, you know, if you look at something like this, don't preset expectations. It's either going to happen or it's not. But the willingness to listen is probably even more important to me than the sharing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree wholeheartedly. Again, you have to seek to understand first before you can do anything else. So listening is so key. And again, the respect is tremendous. Mm -hmm. Jeanette? You know, <clears throat> kind of going off of what everyone else has said, um, you know, Elaine is correct. It is the um, taking a risk and making those connections. Um, Cindy, you're authentic. You know, you surround yourself with what you authentically love and it shows, and we get excited about it because of your authenticity. Um, you were saying with um, the listening, the, the listening, and I, I think the other thing that is really a good thing is um, we are each allowed to be our authentic selves without being judged. And that I think is the beauty of the group. When you, when you put all of that together, you know, you, I know that I can be who I am and I'm not going to have to worry about you guys going, did you hear my team? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the matter with you? <laughs> that was good, Jeanette. <laughs> and that was really true. Yeah. We're going to talk about each other. We talk about each other in person. Like, here we That's are. Right. Yeah. So, so what, 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 what you see in here is what you get. That's right. What you see in here is what you get. All right, John, what's yours? Well, we're, we're, the, running we're, we're, at, we're at the close of the show. So, so again, I, I ditto everything you guys say, and I've done a ton of talking about this and, and they were sort of angry with me because I was taking all their ideas. So, but they, they made it through, notice they made it through. And, and again, I'm just so excited to have the opportunity to share what we have as our little coffee buddy group, our unique, distinctly different five women that got together over a cup of coffee and look where it's gotten us and look at what it's done to our soul and enriched our lives in oh so many ways. So I honor you, namaste every single day to you girls. And I love you to pieces and you know that. And again, I'm hoping that we inspired others to maybe look outside that box, get outside their comfort zone and go make friends. Just be real, be who you are and honor that being who you are. That's vitally important because you are only you. So honor that. Love you much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for joining this Awareness to Action episode. Join me next time for more inspiring stories that will shift your perspective and allow you to see pathways toward a more fulfilling life. It doesn't come overnight, but with a positive outlook and a will to keep moving forward, you will get there and it will be worth every twist and turn along the way. A willingness to learn from this experience is key. If plan A doesn't work, remember, you have plans B through Z to continue your journey. 
With each adjustment, you're one step closer to turning a possibility into a reality. For more information about me or to work with me personally, visit peacefullyhealing.com.